What's happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Today, we're taking a look at the new King B2 microphone from Neat. Now, before we start, the folks over at Neat sent me this microphone for review and consideration for making this review, but like always, I'm not otherwise compensated for making the review. They have no editorial input, meaning they have no say in what I'll say, and they won't see this video before you do. And anyway, if you've seen my, any of my other videos, I don't actually make a recommendation either way. I just want you to hear the mic, how it performs, talk about the specs, so that you can decide if it's right for you. I'm not going to do any post-processing. You'll hear the mic in all its glory, the way it's intended to sound. And towards the end, I'll put this mic into context by letting you hear it compared with a whole bunch of other mics at various price points to help you decide how it sounds and if you like the way it sounds. The King Bee will set you back around $170 at the time I'm making this video. Now I'm gonna have an affiliate link in the description if you wanna check the current price whenever it is that you're watching this video. The affiliate links, they don't cost you anything, but they do help out help out the channel. Now, this is the second iteration of the King Bee. The original version, which I have right here, this was a very, very well-received microphone. It, it really did well. I reviewed it a couple of years ago when it came out, and uh, it made a very impressive showing to me. I was really impressed by it. And it looks as though Neat has kept what people really loved about the original King Bee and changed up uh, some other stuff, perhaps in response to some of the feedback that they got. When you get it, Neat has simplified the packaging compared to the old version. Although, unfortunately, there's a ton of styrofoam involved. But the old version came with just an enormous package that really didn't enhance the usage or storability of the microphone. The new box has less stuff and it is somewhat better at storing the mic, but you're probably going to ditch the outer sleeve, the one with the branding on it. So you're just going to end up storing it in this plain white box as long as that box lasts. I don't know. I get it. Packaging is hard, but personally, I like it when there's just a, a basic latching case that will allow you to keep the mic safe for as long as I own it. I don't want this thing rolling around in a drawer when it's not in use. These capsules are delicate. They're delicate pieces of equipment. In the box, it does come with a custom pop filter that covers the capsule. It appears to be identical to the one that was on the King B1, but with a different color insert. Um, it's black rather than the original bright yellow of the, the original King B1. Um, it also comes with this shock mount here that's sort of designed for this mic specifically. They call it the Beekeeper, but it is a, a custom fit for this mic. Also, extremely durable, extremely well made. I've seen a lot of shock mounts <laughs> in my microphone reviews, and this one is solid, chunky. It's going to do its job, no complaints. On paper, the specs look like they're extremely similar to the original King B1. First, the King B is a condenser microphone. It could be that that's a new term for you. It just means that the mic requires something called phantom power to operate. That's going to be a switch on an interface or a mixer, some piece of equipment that goes between the microphone and the computer. This microphone's not going to work if you just buy a cable with an XLR jack on one end, the big fat jack, and like a headphone jack on the other end. Even though you can buy those cables, it's not going to work for this microphone. Other specs, specs-wise, uh, compared to the King B1, um, it's got the same size capsule. It's a large diaphragm uh, capsule, 34 millimeters. That's good. Um, it's still a cardioid pattern. Cardioid means that it's going to be sensitive from the front. It's going to hear my voice really well from the front, not so well from the back. It's got the same frequency response of 16 hertz on the base end to 20 kilohertz on the high end the full range of human hearing. It's got the same sensitivity, the same sound pressure level. You can be really loud in front of this microphone. It's got the same dynamic range. Practically, every spec is identical to the version 1. The only difference is that the King B2 is claiming a somewhat lower self-noise by 1 dB. 
It's six decibels instead of seven decibels. Now I'm running this through my Audient ID44 interface, which has extremely clean and quiet preamplifiers. The preamplifier electronics don't make any noise. So I'm going to step back. We'll take a listen and we'll listen for any underlying hiss or white noise that might be present in the microphone. You can hear people in the house rooms and rooms away, but you can't hear any hiss. Now, if we compare that to some of the other microphones that are at the same price point, uh, one that comes to mind is the, uh, the AT2020, which has 20 dB of self noise. Um, the Lewitt LCT240 has like 19 decibels of noise. They'll have an audible hiss that's underneath it. The King B doesn't have that, which means that it's going to be a, a clearer, going to be a clearer microphone. Now, on the paperwork that they give you, they give you a frequency response graph, how sensitive the mic is at different frequencies, bass and treble and mid-range and so forth. And it shows that there's a, a natural roll-off of bass at around 50 hertz and a presence boost or a boost in the, the treble area to accentuate the highs and give a, a clarity and airiness to the voice. The microphone itself has a, a, a polar pattern, which means... It's got some parts of the microphone are sensitive to sound and some are less sensitive to sound. And this shows that it's a cardioid microphone, which means it's sensitive from the front, in this case, the flat side of the capsule, and less sensitive from the back. As you turn the mic slightly off axis, so it's rotated with respect to your mouth as you're talking like diagonally into it, it may be somewhat less bright. It might not hear your S sound quite so clearly. So if you want to have full clarity, make sure that the flat side is facing your mouth. Even if the microphone itself is off to the side, face it so that it's facing your mouth. Don't have it like this because it won't, it might not be quite as clear. Face it towards your mouth. So as you turn the mic, you should be able to detect some subtle changes and noticeably, it won't be as the clarity of the highs won't be quite as there. You might lose that sense of airiness until it passes about 90 degrees or so. And then it will drop off considerably. And you can hear that I won't sound the same. You're really hearing my voice reflected off the walls. The mic isn't really hearing me from the back. You're hearing mostly just the reflections. But, and it drops off considerably. Now, knowing that about the pattern, that can help you if you pay attention to where sources of noise are in your room. Could be your PC's fan. There could be an air vent. There could be traffic from the street. If you put those on the less sensitive side of the mic, you won't pick them up quite as loud. They're not going to disappear completely, but they can be reduced. So that's an overview of the King B2. Now, let's do some microphone comparisons. Okay, so now let's put the King B in context in a voiceover kind of situation. We're here in my recording booth. We're going to listen to the King B 2 and a number of other microphones that we're going to compare it to. So you can get a chance to hear the character tonality of the sound and listen to it in sort of its uh, ideal situation and see what the character of the mic is to see if you like the way it sounds. First, we'll compare against the original King B. Here, we want to see if there's any significant changes between the two. I'm hopeful that we'll actually find that the sound is similar. It should be pretty similar, according to the stats. You can see up here on the business end of the basket, it seems as though they're the exact same part, at least externally. Assume it's also the same internally. Perhaps they're using the exact same capsule. My guess is that they are using the same capsule, but I, I don't have any specs that state what capsule it was used. So can't say it for sure. So we'll just have to use our ears and see how they differ. And now you've heard a comparison between the King B2 and the original King B. See what the difference is. Next, we'll compare the King B2 to the Audio-Technica AT2020. Now, at $100 US anyway, this mic is considerably less expensive than the King B2. It's more the same price of the King B1. The huge difference here between these two is the self-noise. The AT2020 has a self-noise of 20 dB. So there is typically with an AT2020, there's an underlying hiss that's created by the microphone itself, the internals of the microphone. That's always present. 
Here, we'll be quiet for a second, and we'll try and hear the difference between the two. Okay, that underlying noise, it's somewhat expected at the price point of the AT2020, that $100 mark. And it was one of the factors that really made the King B1 stand out when it was released because it didn't really have that self-noise. But now you've heard a comparison between the, the tonality, the sound of the AT2020 compared to the King B2, and you've heard a difference in that self-noise. All right, let's move on. Next up, we have the CAD M179. Now, this is another condenser microphone at a similar price point at around $180. This one does come with the integrated shock mount, like the King B2. But the big difference here is the CAD M179 is a multi-pattern microphone. In fact, this one's interesting because it has all of the patterns, all of the possible patterns of the microphone. It's got an omnidirectional pattern, regular cardioid, wide cardioid, super cardioid, hyper cardioid, figure eight, and all of the patterns in between. It's actually what they call an infinitely adjustable pattern. You can pick and choose. I typically use this mic in its cardioid pattern, so I thought it would be an interesting comparison here. Um, I reviewed this microphone a couple of years ago, and there's actually a good demonstration in the second half that shows how you can use that adjustable pattern to help manage noise sources in your room. So I'll put a link to it down below. But now you've had a chance to hear at least the M179 in a similar situation, in the cardioid situation, so you get a sense of the difference between what these two microphones have to offer. The M179 also does have a, a pad switch and a high-pass filter, some buttons and additional functionality on it that's not on the King B. And really, that's just a manufacturer's choice whether or not they, they choose to implement that. So, But you at least have a, have a chance to hear it. The M179 is a, is a nice microphone. It actually made my list of top five microphones for voiceover under $200. It's a, it's, a nice, it's a nice choice. So that's the M179. Next up, let's see how this compares to the Rode NT1A. At $230, the NT1A is a little bit more expensive than the King B. And I would be listening for a, 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 one significant difference here, and that's really in the highs. The NT1A is known for being a very bright and present mic. The highs are quite boosted. And some people like the way it sounds and other people don't think it's right for them. This is one of the mics that people really have strong opinions about. Some people love it. Some people don't think it's right for them. And I think that's true, especially for sibilant voices or people who have really sharp S sounds. They may find that the NT1A's sound signature, it, it, that those highs are a bit too pronounced. They can almost sound staticky or crackly. So it's, it's, a, it's a choice. If you've got a dark voice without a lot of uh, treble in it, sometimes this can help. If you've got a really sharp voice, sometimes it can be, the NT1A can be problematic. So here's what, what we want to do here is we want to listen to how these two microphones differ to see if you find one that's preferable over the other so you can get a sense of the character of the King B. These two mics seem like a natural comparison. The NT1A is slightly more expensive, but they share the same characteristics. They're cardioid, they're extremely low noise, they both have that present boost, presence boost, and there are no buttons or switches. So I thought this would be a natural sort of point of comparison to see which one you like better. Okay, next up we have another microphone that's a very popular choice, especially people who are just getting into voice acting, podcasting, live streaming, and things like that. This is the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure. At $270 for the 440, it's about $100 more than the King B, but if you're looking at a mic for voiceover, this is definitely a mic that might be on your radar. Again, similar functionality between the two. They both have the cardioid pattern, there's no buttons, there's no switches, and they both come with the integrated shock mount and the integrated pop filter. The big difference here between these two is the size difference. The Lewitt is significantly more compact than the King B2. And that frankly could factor into your selection one way or the other, especially if you're in a very small or cramped space, you're working out of a small closet, you don't want the camera, you don't want a microphone to be really prominent on camera. Those are things that may be part of the consideration. The uh, LCT 440 is also a full 
pound lighter at about 11 ounces, 310 grams. And it's so, and you can see it's, it's about one third the size. So there's a big difference between the Lewitts are excellent microphones in their own right. Really solid, really solid build. They're just a really significantly different form factor. And one may be more right for you than the other. Next up, and moving up a little in price, this is the Lawton LA220 at about $300. This is also a cardioid condenser microphone with a, a slightly smaller capsule at 32 millimeters, which may impact the sound. Interestingly, the, interestingly, the LA220, or at least the one I received, came with this, frankly, somewhat budget squeeze-on shock mount as opposed to the, the really sturdy integrated one that comes with the King B. The King Bee's shock mount is considerably more durable. Um, overall, the King Bee, I'll be honest, it feels higher quality, at least in the hand, at practically half the price. But that doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's got a more preferable sound. So here you've got a side-by-side -side if, the, if the Lawton LA220 is on your radar or you want to compare where the King Bee fits tonality-wise, you at least have another point of comparison between the two. Another jump up in price, and here we have the Earthworks Audio Icon Cardioid Condenser Microphone. And this one's sort of a, a different beast, and I thought it would be an interesting comparison. This mic will run you, I think it's about $500 new, and the Icon is extremely popular, extremely durable. It's a gorgeous mic for being on camera. And as you can see, it is an end address microphone, so it can be a little bit smaller on camera. Can it, it make for a, a different look on camera if that's important for you? And unlike all the other microphones that we're looking at today, this one is a small diameter condenser mic, which can sometimes mean a more detailed sound, could be a different sound altogether, could give you a slightly different character to your voice. So I thought a side-by-side -side comparison here may illustrate those differences between a, a small diaphragm condenser and the large diaphragm condenser to see if you have a, a preference between the two sounds because they may, they may be somewhat different. I will say that the Icon is an extremely well-made microphone, ultra durable. This windscreen is removable, unscrews. Difference being also that the, uh, the Icon comes with this integrated you know, nut for mounting. Sorry, I bumped the mic. This integrated nut for uh, mounting to the microphone. It doesn't have a... <laughs> keep bumping the microphones. It doesn't have a big uh, shock mount. You can see that it is considerably smaller. And so that may impact your decision. But this is all integrated as, as one package. Anyway, that is the Earthworks Audio Icon at about $500. Another point of comparison. Okay, coming back to the side address large diaphragm condensers, we're now looking at the uh, Lewitt LCT 540 Pure. This is going to run you about $700. The next few mics are going to be mics that I use a lot in my voiceover work, uh, microphones that I find flattering for my voice. So you'll hear microphones that I actually choose to use for my voice. This one is a step up in quality, build quality, functionality from the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure that we saw earlier. And this one just has some additional functionality built in that, that may be helpful or may not be important for, for voiceover. This one does have a couple of different um, high-pass filters, so you can roll off that bass uh, if you're trying to uh, uh, mitigate the proximity effect. Uh, and it has a couple of different pads, so if you are you know, screaming into the mic, you're miking a very loud source, this one does have some additional adjustments where that functionality is not present in many of the other microphones. It's really just a manufacturing choice really hot mic. Um, it's just got a, a, a beautiful tonality to it. What really sets the, the 540 Pure apart, and I think this separates it from all the other microphones in the comparison, is that the 540 is possibly the quietest microphone on the market from a self-noise perspective. Lewitt says that, I'll paraphrase, but it's virtually impossible to create a mic with lower self-noise than this one. This is rated at 6 dB, this is 4 dB, but my understanding is that the, the, the self-noise is contoured in such a way that the self-noise in the mid-range, the mid-range frequencies, it's contoured in such a way that 
where we're most attuned to hearing the frequencies of noise, they're actually below the threshold of human hearing. So kind of no matter how much gain you apply to it, that, that noise just won't be present. And they say that you can't really even get lower than that because the, the physical action of atoms bumping into the capsule of the microphone is just a noise that could never be uh, eliminated completely. It's interesting. At any rate, the Lewitt LCT540, it's one of my favorites. It's one that gets a lot of use in my booth because I, I feel it's very flattering for my voice. And in the world of microphones, still not terribly expensive at $700. $700. So now you've got a chance to hear the difference between the two. All right, let's go to another one. Okay, next up, we have the Austrian Audio OC18, another mic that has really made a splash in the voiceover world recently. Kind of a new microphone. I think this has only been around for maybe three years, but it's it's a favorite for a lot of people. It's rapidly become a favorite for a lot of people in voiceover because it's got a it's got a great sound to it. And I find that this is another one that has a has a really smooth response that really um, I find very flattering for my voice. I use this microphone quite a bit. I, I didn't pay for this microphone. Austrian Audio sent it to me for, for a review, and it ended up becoming sort of a staple in my locker. The high-frequency response graph of the uh, of the OC18 shows it's got a different shape than some of the other microphones, including the King B. So I wanted to include this here so you could get a different, you could sort of hear a microphone that's got a, a, a bit of a different tone or, or character to it. I find this mic extremely flattering to my voice. And this is another one of these of the microphones that you may never need to upgrade from. This could serve as your microphone kind of forever. And so that may not be true for people with the, you know, that buy the King B because of its price point, they may be uh, motivated or incentivized to, uh, to upgrade a microphone uh, where people who have the OC18, they may never get that sort of urge to upgrade from. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how this inexpensive mic compares to, I don't know, the big boys, sort of the, the entry level to the, to the high-end microphones. Okay, so that's the OC18. I got two more microphones to share with you just for more comparison. All right, next up, we have another one of the, the big boy microphones. <laughs> for lack of a better explanation, a forever microphone, a microphone that you may never feel the urge to upgrade from. And this is the Neumann TLM-103, really a staple of voiceover booths everywhere. Probably one of the benchmark mics for, especially for uh, voice actors in their, in their home studios where they just need the one cardioid microphone that's going to last them forever. I think the TLM-103 is, is one of those goals microphones that, that people have. But like the, like the King Bee, this one has no buttons, no switches, unlike some of the other microphones that we've seen. So like I said, it's, it's a manufacturer's choice. But this microphone will run you, I think it's $1,100 new. So what's that, five, six times more expensive than the King Bee? Um, but the 103 is also known for being a very present microphone. It's got a great bass response. I've always described the tone of the of the microphone as, as being muscular. There's a lot of a lot of body to it. The guys over at the uh, the the uh, booth junkie Discord would say it's got a it's got a pleasant sense of meat to it. At any rate, the uh, the 103. It, it, some people love it. Some people think it's too present, too bright. But a lot of voice actors, a lot of voice actors use it. So I thought I would include it as a comparison here to see how the how the King B2 shapes up against one of these mics that, you know, people save up years for to turn into their into their forever, their forever microphone. So now you've heard the King B against the TLM 103. And finally, because I have it, I thought I'd include the venerable Neumann U87 AI edition. So this is a, a modern incarnation of the Neumann U87 AI. This microphone, sort of on a on a on a different level, this microphone will set you back about thirty two hundred dollars. But not only is this a staple of voiceover, this is a staple of studios around the world as and it's known for the quality of its sound and its versatility. It's one of those microphones that you can kind of put in front of anything and it's going to sound good. Perhaps that means it's a, a bit more neutral of a sound. I'll let you be the judge of it compared to the other microphones that we've heard, but it is one microphone that sort of makes everything sound good. And at $3,200, you would certainly hope that to be the case. <laughs> 
So that's all I have for you today. I, I really hope that helps. I hope that having those mic comparisons help sort of put the, the mic in context, help you decide if the King B might be the right microphone for you. You've heard it now in a in sort of a a live streaming type environment. You've heard it in a voiceover environment. You've seen it compared to a bunch of different microphones. So you have a sense of how the sound profile might, where this mic fits in the, in the gamut of other microphones at a lot of different price points. Thanks again to Neat for sending this to me. I'm really grateful for it. If you found this video helpful, I'd certainly appreciate it. If you, if you click like, or leave a comment, engage with the video so that we can tell YouTube that this has been been helpful. I'd be grateful for it. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today. I just want you to, 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 to go out there to get a microphone so that you can get into a booth or get in front of a desk, in front of a camera, and you can record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.